Well, praise the Lord, church. Blessings to those of you who are joining me in this morning prayer, the Monday after the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, proper 18. Our opening sentence today is from Psalms 122 and verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Just before we ask our petitions and praise the Lord today, let's confess our sins together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our own hearts. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have not done those things which we and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there's no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent uh, according to your promises. Declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, in the Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 12. Help me, O Lord, for there is no godly one left. For the faithful have vanished from among the children of men. They speak falsely, every one with his neighbor. They flatter with their lips and deceive with a double heart. The Lord shall root out all deceitful lips and the tongues that speak proud things which have said, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. Now, because of the trouble of the needy and because of the deep sighing of the poor, I will raise up, says the Lord, and will give help to everyone who longs for it. The words of the Lord are pure words, even as silver that is tried in the furnace and as gold that is purified seven times in the fire. Preserve us, O Lord, and save us from the perverse, this perverse and evil generation. The ungodly walk on every side when wickedness is exalted among the children of men. And then Psalms 13. How long will you utterly forget me, O Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I seek counsel in my soul and be so vexed in my heart? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. 
You have light to my eyes that I sleep not in death. Least my enemies say I have prevailed against him. For if I am cast down, those who trouble me will rejoice. But my trust is in your mercy, and my heart is joyful in your salvation. I will sing of the Lord because he has dealt so lovingly with me. Indeed, I will praise the name of the Most High. And Psalms 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and have become abominable in their doings. There is none that does good. No, not one. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any who would understand and seek after God. But they have all gone astray. They have altogether become abominable. There is none that does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those workers of evil, who eat up my people as bread and call not upon the Lord? There, there were they brought into great fear, even where no fear was. For God is in the generation of the righteous. Though you have made a mockery of the counsel of the poor, yet they put their trust in the Lord. Who shall give salvation unto Israel out of Zion? When the Lord restores his captive people, then shall Jacob rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Glory be to the Father in the Son through the power of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is from Second Samuel chapter 23. A reading from the second book of Samuel, beginning with the 23rd chapter, the first verse. Now these are the last words of David. <clears throat> the oracle of David, the son of Jesse. The oracle of the man who was raised on high. The anointed of the God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, when one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God, he dawns on them like the morning sun, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning, like rain that makes grass to sprout from the earth. For does not my house stand so with God? For he has made me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure? For will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But worthless men are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be taken with the hand. But the man who touches them arms himself with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they are utterly consumed with fire. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had, Jeshab, Beshabeth, a, he was chief of three. He welded his spear against 800 whom he killed at one time. Next to him among the mighty men was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, son of Ahoi. He was with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there for battle and the men of Israel withdrew. He rose and struck down the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clung to the sword. And the Lord brought about a great victory that day and the men returned after him only to strip the slain. And next to him was Shema, the son of Aji, the Herorite. The Philistines gathered together at Lahai, where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the men fled from the Philistines. But he took his stand in the midst of the plot and defended it and struck down the Philistines, and the Lord worked a great victory. The three of the thirty chief men went down and came about harvest time to David at the cave of Adullam when a band of Philistines was encamped in the valley of Raphim. 
David was then in the stronghold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then at Bethlehem. And David said longingly, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, that is by the gate. Then the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and carried and brought it to David. But he would not drink of it. He poured it out to the Lord and said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went at the risk of their own lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Now Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruah, was chief of the thirty. And he welded his spear against three hundred men and killed them, and won a name beside the three. He was the most renowned of the thirty and became their commander. But he did not attain to the three. And Benaniah, the son of jo Joadda, was a valiant man of Cadzel, a doer of great deeds. He struck down two arrows of Moab. He also went down and struck down a lion in a pit on a day when snow had fallen. And he struck down an Egyptian, a handsome man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But Benaniah went down to him with a staff and snatched the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things did Benaniah, the son of Joadda, and won a name beside the three mighty men. He was renowned among the thirty, but he did not attain to the three, and David set him over his bodyguard. We praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise, holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed armies of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Our second lesson is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 16 a reading from the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, beginning with the fourth chapter, the first verse. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to talk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you are called in the one hope that belongs to your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying, he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry 
for building up the body of Christ, till we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be unto God. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all those who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, in the Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us recite together our statement of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Let us pray our family prayer in the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, guide those who govern us and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Our collect of the day 
Monday after the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Proper 18. O Lord, o Lord God, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns as God Almighty through the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your laws, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We move now to our general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks with all, for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation and uh, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable, immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth our praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns as God Almighty through the power of the Holy Spirit throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you've promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name that you would grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be unto God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is the Father who made us, the Son who saved us, and the Holy Spirit that sanctifies us. One God, world without end. Amen. Beloved, Thank you for joining me this morning in our morning prayer. And armed with this prayer and with this worship and with this declaration of our faith, let us go into our day bearing his cross and bearing witness of that work that he did on the cross for all men and women and boys and girls with whom you will come in contact with through this day. Preach the gospel, and if necessary, use words. My blessing for you is that God sanctify you wholly in your mind, in your body, and also in your spirit. Go with God.